Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, things that infuriate me, I'm doing the I'm So Annoyed book tag. So I haven't done a book tag for a while, but they are always really fun. If you don't know, a book tag is basically a series of questions that booktubers ask each other um, about bookish topics. So this one was originally created by uh, Books I'm Not Reading, um, adapted from a video by uh, A Web of Stories, and I was tagged by two people. So I was tagged by MJ from the channel Reading This Life and Jolene from the channel Bookworm Adventure Girl. So thank you both for tagging me. There are um, 11 questions, the, the final one of which is to tag some people. So I need to, and I haven't prepared for that one, so I need to think of some people to tag um, as we go through it. I think most people have done this tag um, already, but I'll see if I can think of some people who may not have. So here are the prompts then. So the first uh, the first one is, oh, um, and going into this, I would say I've really enjoyed watching people's like versions of this tag. And a lot of people seem to get quite wound up by various things to do with books. I, generally speaking, do not get annoyed by things like in life generally. I'm a fairly chilled out kind of a guy. Um, I don't get particularly wound up about things. And I particularly, I think, don't get particularly wound up about things that are related to things that are supposed to be like entertaining. So I don't get wound up about things to do with my hobbies because the point of my hobbies is to be stress-free. Um, I don't want to... I don't want to be in kind of a mindset to make my my hobbies stressful um, my work life is stressful enough so I, I turn to reading in particular and, and other hobbies to de-stress so I think for that reason my, my answers to many of these questions are going to be yeah I'm not really that bothered so we'll, we'll see how we go anyway um, okay so first question then uh, is do publishers ever do things that you find annoying um, so there are a few things, and I wouldn't say any of these things like enrage me, um, but I do find it a little bit annoying that there are more um, that the books just fall out of print. So there are loads of books that I really want to read that I find it difficult to get because they're out of print, um, and I get why books fell out of print like physically because it, it costs money to print books. I find it disappointing that books aren't more books aren't available digitally that have fallen out of my like, physical print um, or even that after a while publishers don't just um, you know put books into the public domain if they're not intending to publish new editions of them um, so that you know anyone could could legally publish a um, you know an ebook version of the book but equally I get that you know publishing is a, is a business and you know I'm sure there are reasons why uh, they take the decisions they take about which books to, to keep in print and which books not to. Um, I am also and somewhat annoyed sometimes by the fact that you just see constant new editions of popular books. So you know like Stephen King's books you seem to get new editions of his books like every other year um, and I'd much rather publishers put their efforts and, and energies into finding new authors to, to publish books by rather than just constantly publishing new editions of um, of older books um, and re kind of related to that quite often when you get new editions of books you get introductions to those books which then spoil the book I think publishers have this sense that once a book is like more than five years old, it's fine to put an introduction at the start of it with spoilers in it. It's not. Put the introduction, you know, put it, make it an afterword. Put it at the end. Don't put it at the beginning. Um, don't make it the first thing that people read. So, so that does annoy me a little bit, but not hugely. Um, OK, next one then. Um, have you ever been annoyed by a spoiler? Um, even as something, uh, even something as simple as someone telling you they're the great twist. Not really um i can't think of any books that i remember being spoiled for me by people i like genuinely can't and i think it's because i tend to avoid um like if there's a book i really want to read i tend to avoid reading too much about it beforehand um and and even you know sometimes avoid watching people's videos about it until after i've read it so i tend to probably avoid spoilers um beca because of that I can think of, so the, so the thing that was spoiled for me, that still grates with me, I do, when I tell you what it is, you'll appreciate how long I've, I've held this ill feeling for, um, is Twin Peaks. 
So, so my mum, who didn't even watch Twin Peaks, and I'm talking about the original Twin Peaks series um, back in the early 90s, um, my mum managed to spoil the end of Twin Peaks for me, um, despite not even watching it. And I'm still I'm still annoyed about it. So sorry if you're watching, Mum. I I probably have forgiven you. Um, another so another good in in terms of um, a story about spoilers. So I, I'm now going to spoil in this video um, of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. Um, so if you have not read of Mice and Men, which is a fantastic book and you should read, if you haven't read it, skip forward like thirty seconds to a minute. Um, I'll put up a like a uh, some text across the bottom of the screen when I'm doing the spoiler so you you know you've got past it so if the text isn't there anymore you'll pass the spoiler so my sister is an English teacher and obviously of mice and men is a, is a text they teach at school so they have like loads of copies of it which they give out to the kids to, to read and then take back and they get given to, to the next year's kids anyway in one of these copies of of mice and men one of the students had written like literally on the first page Lenny dies, which I thought was, was brilliant. Anyway, um, so, right, moving on then. So next next question then uh, is, um, when it comes to short story... Oh, no, sorry, uh, I'm skipping ahead. Um, have, have you ever been annoyed by what uh, you discovered in a little free library, a book sale, or a used bookstore? Uh, no, I don't think I have. I, I love... Um, so the problem we have over here in the UK, and it may well be a problem in other places as well, is that charity shops, which used to be a great source of like you know interesting old books, just seem to get filled up with crap in terms of, and by crap I mean books that were really popular last year. Um, so you know all the bestsellers from last year is what you see on the shelves, and it's very rare to find anything that's actually interesting in a charity shop. So and and we don't really have little free libraries over here, or not not where I am anyway. Um, the thing I delight on the, the the place I find like great stuff sometimes is in those little charity book sales you get at places like railway stations, um, in doctor surgeries, in supermarkets sometimes. So just a table with a load of books on it and a and a, like an honesty bucket to put money in. And I found some great things there. But you do find some really random stuff there, like, you know, like outdated copies of the Highway Code and things like that. So, um, but but does it annoy me that people have left those there? No, it's, it's fine. Um, OK, uh, so uh, next question then. When it comes to short story collections, are you annoyed if there's a novella in the middle of the collection? So I, I'll confess it hadn't even occurred to me to be annoyed by this somebody uh, when I was watching someone else's video I got why people might be annoyed by this which is if you've got a short story collection and you are using it to like read a, a story in your coffee break every day or something like that so there's kind of a you know reasonably standard you know you kind of get 20 pages in or something like that and you get you know you keep reading and you get to a story that's much longer then I get how that might be a little bit annoying but you can just look at the index and just choose to skip over that one and read it in the evening or something can't you so no, not annoying. Um, next one then, deckled edges, beautiful or annoying. I, I still don't think I've ever had a book with deckled edges. And deckled edges are like where you get like weird, I can't even describe it. I'll have to put up a picture. Like where the, the edges of the book aren't all uniform and, and flat. They're kind of different, I don't know, different widths. Um, that doesn't make sense at all. But if you know what deckled edges are, you know what I mean. So I've never had a book with decorative edges, I don't think so. Therefore, I don't know if they're annoying. I think they look okay, but I wouldn't have called them beautiful. Um, okay, next one then. Um, other people's annotations in a used book or library book. Uh, annoying or are you okay with it? I'm, I'm okay with it, actually. I don't, I don't mind it. Um, as long as the book's not completely defaced, um, I don't mind it. I've, I've got a one of my Ed McBain books, which is a picture book that Ed McBain um, wrote based on his 87th Precinct characters. Um, has uh, I bought an ex library copy from the US because it was it wasn't published over here, um, and that's got loads of like crayon scribbles in it and things like that. And actually, I find that quite charming. Um, so yeah, I'm not particularly annoyed by other people writing in books. If I bought a new book and stuff in a print it, that might be different. Um, okay, uh, if there's a series or collection of certain kinds of books, like an imprint, and changes are made, I think they mean changes to the, like the physical design of the book, the visual design of the books. Are you annoyed or okay with it? I'm fine. I'm not someone who um, who needs my looks, books to look pretty, as you can probably tell by looking at my bookshelves behind me. So I don't 
really buy books as objects. I buy books as containers of stories. So I'm not bothered if I, you know, my, this is my 7th Precinct series of books here. My favourite series of books, they all look, you know, largely completely different from each other. At least in part because they were published over, you know, 50 years. Um, but there's never been, you know, they've all, they've had various publishers throughout the life cycle. You, you know, today you can't buy, even today you can't buy a set of them that all looks the same. Um, and I'm fine with that. I, I like the fact that, you know, books are books are kind of cultural things as well as being books. So I just said that I buy books to be containers of words, but I like the fact that book design and book covers and things like that reflect the time in which they are published and the you know the kind of visual obsessions of, of that particular moment in time. So the fact that book series change their design, um, you know, I think is interesting. It's interesting to look back through this series of 87th Precinct books which were published over several decades and look at the different design languages that were used at different points you know during during the past 50 60 years um so yes that's my answer to that one no no I'm not annoyed by it I'm actually kind of interested by it um okay uh where have I got to um uh, do the decisions of characters in a novel ever annoy you um no, I don't think so. I mean, I suppose they might do, but it seems strange to be to me to be annoyed by the decisions of characters in a book because it's the decisions of the characters that make the book. You might be annoyed that, you know, the ending of a book isn't very good or something like that, but it seems silly to blame the characters for that, if that makes sense. It doesn't really make sense, does it? But um, no, I, I enjoy going on a journey with characters. I think that's why I'm a fan of, of Stephen King, because, you know, King famously doesn't really know where his books are going to go. You know, he just writes them. Um, and that, you know, sometimes is, is very, very obvious. But I like the fact that characters evolve over time. I like characters who make bad decisions. I think that makes them interesting characters. Um, OK, next one then. Um, are you ever annoyed by how someone organises their books? Uh, no, it's up, to, it's up to other people how they organise their books. Um, I have my own particular way of organising my books, which is partly alphabetically by author surname, but also by size. So by size first and then alphabetically by author, author surname. Um, it's completely up to you how you want to arrange your books. Um, I won't I won't judge you. Um, OK, uh, right. Final question then. Um, share something bookish that you find annoying. I don't. I don't think there is anything really. So as I've said, um, I, um, you know, I try to keep my hobbies stress free and and not to not to get myself wound up about things that are inconsequential. And and anything to do with a hobby really is, is probably going to be inconsequential. I suppose the thing that does annoy me actually, and which I you know have talked about on the channel, is is snobbishness in in reading. So I think you know. Everyone reads different books. Everyone likes different books. Everyone has different requirements from books. Everyone, you know, goes into, you know, picks up a book for, for something different, for a different form of entertainment, for a different form of, you know, in, information or education or whatever. So I do dislike snobbishness in books, uh, in, in like bookish circles. And I do, I think you do see it sometimes in, you know, discussions of books on, on Booktube and, and other places. So that is, is one thing that, that does annoy me generally speaking, in, in bookishness, but I try to just, you know, not worry about it because life's too short, isn't it? Um, okay, so finally then, uh, take some other people. Golly, so, like I say, I think a lot of people have done this tag. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to randomly tag some people and, and hopefully you haven't done the tag, but if you have, no worries. And if you haven't, no worries, you don't need to do it. Uh, so I'm going to tag uh, Randy Ray, the literate Texan, uh, I'm going to tag uh, Sarah from the Bookish Knitter um, and I'm going to tag uh, Duncan McCurdy. Um, so that was my uh, my attempt at doing the I'm so annoyed book tag. Do let me know in the comments um, if you're annoyed by any of the things, uh, if you're annoyed by this video <laughs> or uh, if you have particular opinions on any of the questions. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.